Hello everyone and welcome to the first video on acidic and basic solutions. In this video, our focus will be on what one can arguably say is the main formula for working with acidic and basic solutions. Now let's uh, start with some terminology and notation. In our discussion, we will frequently talk about two ions. One of them is the H plus ion, which we call the hydrogen ion. And the other is the OH minus ion, which we refer to as the hydroxide ion. Now, the reason we care about these two ions is because water molecules have a tendency to break down into H plus and OH minus ions. This is not a reaction that's uh, frequent, but it does happen from time to time. The presence of the double arrow indicates that the reaction can go both ways. Sometimes water molecules break down generating H plus and OH minus ions. And sometimes an H plus ion and an OH minus ion recombine to generate a water molecule. Now for some time, it was believed that it is the H plus and OH minus ions that float around in water. But if you think about it, H plus, which is a hydrogen atom that has lost it's one electron, is basically a proton. And, uh, and protons are uh, very strong reactants, and they don't stay what they are. And they have this strong tendency to attach themselves to a water molecule, creating an H3O plus ion. So what you actually see in water uh, are not H plus and OH minus ions, but H3O plus and OH minus ions. Now, although today we know that they, uh, you will find H3O plus ions, not H plus ions, the notation H plus has still persisted in working with acidic and basic solutions. And you are more than welcome to use H3O plus if you like. Uh, but in, in this video, I will stick to the use of the notation H plus for the fact that its use is much more common. We refer to an H3O plus ion as a hydronium ion. All right, uh, so let's uh, now talk about the other notation that you need to know about. And this notation is the notation that helps us talk about the concentration of these ions. Uh, the double bracketed notation, and the shape is important, they have to be square brackets, otherwise the meaning changes. For square brackets, uh, it's, it's a shorthand for, con for the phrase concentration of, uh, and of course, the concentration of whatever you write in between those brackets. As an example of that, if you write H plus within the square brackets, then you are talking about the concentration of H plus ions. By concentration, we mean how many H plus ions we have, and of course, uh, to make it more meaningful, we'll talk about how many H plus ions per unit volume. It's very common for the number of H plus ions to use the unit mole and for volume to use liter. And therefore, the most common unit that you'll find for concentration is moles per liter. And if you write OH minus within the square brackets, then you're talking about the concentration of OH minus ions. Again, how many of them for in, in one unit volume. And, uh, and if they use moles and liters as the units for counting and volume, then the unit of concentration, again, will be moles per liter. Now, in terms of uh, how many of these uh, ions we have floating around in water, uh, in pure water, based on experimental data, the concentration of H plus is one times 10 to the power of negative seven moles per liter. Uh, this is a very, very small number. Uh, in fact, one ten millionth of a mole per liter. But, uh, uh, but again, uh, of course, there is a huge number of uh, entities in one mole, uh, but still one times 10 to the power of negative seven, relatively speaking, is small. And if you notice, uh, when the water molecule breaks down, you get equal numbers of H plus and OH minus ions one of each. And therefore, the total number of OH minus ions and the total number of H plus ions must be the same in pure water. And that means that the concentration of OH minus is also 10 to the power of ne negative 7 moles per liter. 
Now, in terms of how you write the uh, numerical value, uh, 1 times 10 to the power of negative 7 is preferred because it uh, matches scientific notation. Uh, infrequently, you'll find that people drop the 1, uh, which is okay. It's not a big deal, but it's better to keep the 1. And in terms of abundance uh, of these ions relative to water molecules, uh, if you uh, go through the, uh, uh, through the math, uh, you'll find that in the end, uh, for every one H plus ion, there are 555 million water molecules. Uh, so there, there are extremely few of these ions floating around uh, in water. Uh, again, one H plus ion for 555 million water molecules. And because there are equal numbers of H plus and OH minus ions, you can say the same thing for OH minus ions. For every one OH minus ion, there are 555 million water molecules. All right. Uh, now we can upset that kind of balance between the number of H plus and OH minus ions, and that's where acidic solutions and basic solutions come. Uh, if if there are more H plus ions compared to OH minus ions, we have an acidic solution. If there are more OH minus ions compared to H plus ions, then we have a basic solution. Now the question, of course, is given that water molecules when they break down they create equal numbers of H plus and OH minus ions. Uh, how, do we, how do we change that balance between the number of H plus and OH minus ions? And uh, we can do that by dissolving substances that are called acids in water. So of course, water is one source of generating H plus ions. Uh, but uh, we can also dissolve, let's say, HCl, which, which is hydrochloric acid, uh, in water as well. And when we do that, HCl breaks down into two ions. H plus and Cl minus. And in that way, by dissolving HCl in water, we get extra H plus ions uh, floating around in water. And that, tends, that turns the uh, solution acidic. Uh, AQ stands for aqueous, which means that HCl has been dissolved in water. And of course, there are other substances that can create H plus when we dissolve them in water. H2SO4, which is another acid, uh, when it dissolved, it, uh, it creates uh, H plus and SO4, 4, 2 minus ions. Uh, and there are other ones, HNO3 is another acid, and so on. For basic solutions, there is a similar kind of a process. We can dissolve certain substances in water that create OH minus ions. Of course, again, water is one source of creating OH minus ions. But we can dissolve substances such as NaOH in water, which generates Na plus and OH minus, and also KOH, uh, and again it creates H plus and OH minus, as well as CaOH2, creating Ca2 plus and OH minus. These substances that create OH minus ions in water when they when we dissolve them in water are called basic substances. Okay, with this in mind, we, we can now talk about uh, the, uh, the main equation for acidic and basic solutions. Uh, again, water molecules break down into H plus and OH minus ions. And one question is, uh, assuming that we have, let's say, increased the amount of H plus by dissolving an acid, acidic substance in water, uh, what happens to the concentration of OH minus ions? Uh, does, does the number of OH minus ions get affected at all? Or does it also increase? Or maybe it goes down. And also, if it goes up or down, how? And so we seek a kind of relationship between the concentration of H plus and concentration of OH minus in water. Now, before we talk about what that relationship is, uh, let's talk about notation a bit. Here I've used equal sized double arrows. Uh, and uh, when the size of the two arrows is equal, that means that the forward reaction and the backward reaction happen as fast. So as an example of that, supposing in one minute, let's say a thousand water molecules break down, during that same one minute, a thousand water molecules are reformed. And although breaking down and reformation happen all the time, in the balance we're not losing water molecules and we are not gaining water molecules. Same thing on the right side. 
let's say if during one minute one H plus combines with one OH minus generating an H2O molecule during that same minute one H2O breaks down creating an H plus and an OH minus ion ions and so in the balance we're not losing H plus or OH minus ions now if we change the size of the double arrows so let's say that the bottom arrow is longer uh, now the forward reaction is happening slower it's slower than the backward reaction so let's say for the sake of argument if during one minute let's say a thousand H2O molecules break down during that same minute 2000 water molecules are reformed because the backward reaction is happening faster and so in the balance, we are gaining water molecules. Uh, and you can also go through a similar argument to show that in the balance, you're losing H plus and OH minus. You're getting fewer compared to losing them. And the situation can be reversed. If the top arrow is longer, now during the same time period, more water molecules break down compared to those that reform. And so in the balance, we are losing water molecules. And uh, at the same time, we can argue that we are gaining H plus and OH minus because the forward reaction is generating more of them compared to backward reaction destroying them. Okay, so let's say we start with pure water and now the two arrows have the same size. Everything is, uh, is fine. Uh, the forward and backward reactions are happening at the same speed. Now, let's say all of a sudden we dissolve enough acid enough acidic substance such as HCl in water uh, to increase the amount of H plus 10 times. So the concentration of H plus goes up 10 times. Because now we have more H plus ions, the backward reaction speeds up. In fact, it will speed up 10 times. And so we end up with this kind of scenario. Now the backward reaction is happening faster compared to the forward reaction. Uh, and uh, and because, uh, because of this, we are losing H plus ions and OH minus ions. Now we would like to keep the concentration of H plus to 10 times its initial value because in the end, when things settle down, we would like to see uh, where OH minus, where the concentration of OH minus is. How did the, the uh, OH minus respond to the increase in the number of H plus ions? And so, uh, although we are losing H plus ions, uh, we, we're going to replace them. Whatever we lose, because the backward reaction is faster, uh, we will replace those so that we keep the concentration of H plus at 10 times its original value. Uh, now, it's also true that the concentration of OH minus is going down because we are losing more OH minus compared to gaining them. But we're not going to uh, touch that because we would like OH minus to sort of uh, adjust itself uh, rather than we influence its number. Uh, so the concentration of H plus and OH minus start to go down because we are losing more of them compared to gaining them. Uh, we add H plus to keep it at 10 times the original value and we let OH minus to go down. Because we are losing OH minus ions, the backward reaction slows down a bit. And so we end up with this kind of scenario. We are still losing H plus and OH minus in the balance. We replace any H plus that we lose and we let OH minus go down. Because now OH- minus continues to go down, the backward reaction slows down again. And eventually we get to a point where the forward and the backward reactions are happening at the same time. But the difference between this scenario and the top scenario is that while we had one of each H plus and OH- minus here, now the number of H plus has increased 10 times. Uh, if that's the case, if the number of H plus is up 10 times, it would tend to make the backward reaction go 10 times faster. So something must have happened to the number of OH minus ions to slow the backward reaction 10 times to compensate for the increase here. And that can happen if the number of or the concentration of OH minus ions goes down 10 times. So 10 times the concentration of H plus ions makes the backward reaction go up 10 times. It will happen 10 times faster. But because there are 10 times fewer OH minus ions, the backward reaction slows down 10 times and therefore speeding up 10 times and slowing down 10 times will cancel each other's effects and the backward reaction will go now uh, as fast as the forward reaction. So we started with one of each 
and now we have 10 times or we started with how many whatever amount of each so long as they are equal and now we have 10 times as many h plus ions and we have uh, 10 times fewer oh minus ions now the 10 the actual value 10 uh, was picked uh, just so that we have a number to work with you could have used two or three or whatever number that you wanted or even fractions decimals uh, the key is that if you use two then you would end up with the argument that uh, twice the number of h plus ions means half as many oh minus ions so you multiply this by two and you divide this by two and uh, and this is true for any number you multiply the number of h plus ions by any number that you want the number of oh minus ions will go down uh, by by uh, you have to divide it by that number uh, if you think about it this kind of relationship is inverse proportion and for inverse proportion relationships the one equation that we have uh, the conservation form is q1 q2 is equal to k with q1 and q2 being the concentrations of h plus ions and oh minus ions so now we can write down that uh, the uh, concentration of h plus times the concentration of oh minus must be a constant now, uh, to find the actual value of the constant, we can use uh, related pairs of values of H plus of concentrations of H plus and OH minus ions. And uh, to make things simple, we use the values in pure water. Uh, and because each one of them is 10 to the power of negative 7, the value of K will come to 10 to the power of negative 14. And so we have our formula. The concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus is equal to 10 to the power of negative 14. Okay, everyone, thank you very much for watching this video. In the next video, I will uh, give you an example of an actual word problem and application of this formula. Uh, following that, there will be a video on uh, pH and pOH formulas another on applications of pH and pOH formulas, and one video that sort of summarizes all the formulas that we have for working with acidic and basic solutions. Take care and see you soon.